All right, so the process of making DNA takes the action of at least, well, we're going to draw five enzymes in this drawing. There are more enzymes involved, but there are five that are crucial to understand how they're working and what they're doing to really understand DNA replication. The first of these enzymes is DNA helicase. Now, DNA helicase, kind of like its name states, acts on the helix. So what it does is it starts off way back at an origin of replication, and it moves along the DNA, unzipping it like a zipper. Now, this represents DNA helicase right here. Now, if you're one of my students, then you know that I'm going to expect you to draw this entire drawing, so pay close attention to everything that it takes to get your full grade. Right in here, you have connected DNA nitrogenous bases. They're connected by hydrogen bonds right here. The helicase breaks those bonds, and they separate and pull apart. So DNA helicase unzips the DNA so that it's available to make your new strand. Now up here we have the leading strand, down here we have the lagging strand. Most of the time teachers avoid talking about the lagging strand, not us. We're actually going to attack that because it's the best place for you to learn exactly how DNA replication occurs. Now as helicase is traveling toward the right, it's uncovering locations known as primer locations, and at those locations primase will come in and lay down nucleotides of RNA. This is our RNA primase. RNA primase is necessary because there is no enzyme that we have inside of our bodies that can lay down the first nucleotide of DNA without having something to hook it to. All of our DNA polymerases require an initial nucleotide to hook their DNA nucleotides onto. Now, coming on back down the strand, if you go far enough back, you'll run into a location where another primer location was actually uncovered beforehand. Because it was uncovered longer ago, this strand is more mature into the process of being created. So back here, you'll have another primer. Now, the difference here is this primer is longer than this primer because this one is being built. It's not the full length yet. That shows that RNA primase is doing its job. The fact that we drew it on that end shows us that RNA primase is working that way or the opposite way of helicase making this the lagging strand. At the end of this primer you already have some DNA that has been put together. Some of the nucleotides have already been matched up. Now, those nucleotides have been matched up by the third enzyme that we're going to look at the action of. And that third enzyme, for us, is the one that does the bulk of the work in DNA replication. This one is DNA polymerase. Now, the polymerases... are noted by number. This is polymerase 3. It has nothing to do with when it works in the process. It only has to do with when it was discovered. That's what the number 3 represents. Over here, we have another DNA polymerase 3. So on the leading strand, DNA polymerase 3 can just follow the helicase. Once a primer is laid down and the polymerase 3 hooks on, it just follows the helicase for a long period. Down here, though, because it has to be made in, set, in segments, a primase builds its primer, then the polymerase 3 takes over at the end of that and moves back the opposite way of the helicase. Now we go a little further back. And each of these little fragments of DNA that are made are referred to as Okazaki fragments. And Okazaki fragments all end up being turned into one continuous strand of DNA, like the leading strand. It just is a little bit more complex in how that happens. So if this strand was about that long, this strand would be about that long. And then I'd have another full-length primer here. But on the end of this one, I again have completed DNA because this one's going to be older than this one is. So this strand of DNA is going to come back quite a ways until it will be about the same length as the one before it. And then at the end of that, it will have, it will have this kind of abrupt end to it. 
And the reason it has this abrupt end is there was another primer that was in that was already laid down in front of it. Now this one you have to draw as being a little shorter again, but not because it's being made. This one is shorter because it's being destroyed. For you to end up with a strand of DNA here, a complete strand of DNA, you have to get rid of all the RNA strands. You have to replace each nucleotide of, DNA, of RNA with a nucleotide of DNA. So let me slide this over so you can see what I'm drawing now. This strand of DNA is back to here. We have this shorter primer and we have a separate enzyme that comes in. And this enzyme, what it does is it slides down through here. And as it slides, it erases a nucleotide of RNA at a time and replaces a nucleotide of DNA. Now every time it does that, this little gap moves over, so eventually that gap will be right there. The enzyme that does this is another DNA polymerase, but it was the first one found, so it's DNA polymerase 1. Now DNA polymerase 1 is different than 3 in that DNA polymerase 1 it can actually remove RNA nucleotides and replace them with DNA nucleotides. Now let's move back and look at what happens at the end. Now down at the end right here, this used to be RNA, but it's already been replaced by one of our enzymes and the enzyme that replaced that RNA was DNA polymerase 1. Now if you're at the point where you're learning about these enzymes, you should know already that nucleotides come in as a sugar, a nitrogenous base, and three phosphates. And each of these phosphates are negatively charged and they really don't like to be next to each other. So when we bend that bond a little bit, these come apart, these break off. And when they fly off, that energy is used to hook this thing called a nucleotide in place. Well, because there's only energy on one side, when that primer was broken down, you could only hook it on one side. You didn't have any energy. Over here, there's no energy to hook it on. So that requires a final enzyme. Our final enzyme in this process that we're going to worry about is an enzyme that can take ATP and turn it into ADP. And in the process, it will cause this gap to actually hook together. So it's going to actually fill up this gap right here. And once it's finished, everything on that side is actually completed DNA. Then what will happen is by the time this gets completed up in here, this will be built back. That'll all be DNA with a gap right there. This enzyme will move to here. This enzyme would have to move up and eliminate this primer. And that's kind of the process. So you're seeing this spatially, but it also kind of happens this way temporally in time. Now anatomically this drawing isn't exactly correct. There are some little modifications that happen inside of your cell. But to understand the process it's absolutely correct in really getting how these five enzymes work. If you're in my class then you need to know exactly how these drawings need to look to get full credit for drawing this one and you would have to label this one. This is ligase. Ligase have to be drawn, would have to be drawn so that the enzyme would encircle the entire gap. DNA polymerase 1 has to be in contact with a short RNA primer. There has to be the gap, and it has to be clear that the enzyme is moving this way. So it can't be all the way around this piece of RNA. It has to show that it's on one side of the RNA, so I know it's working that direction. This one down here, polymerase 3, is about the easiest one to get your points for. Polymerase 3 just has to be on the end of the DNA strand away from the primer, so it's working toward the next primer. It's building that way. And then this one up here, the RNA primase, RNA primase has to actually be on one end of the primer. If you circle the whole thing, I can't tell if you know which way it moves. So if it's on one end of the primer, and this primer is shorter than these two that are already complete, then I know that you're showing me that it's building that primer. Helicase is the easiest one to get. 
you have to draw the enzyme encircling some connected primers, or some connected, uh, not primers, but nucleotides, and some that have actually been separated from each other. That indicates that you know it's unzipping and that you understand that it's moving that way. There you go. That's how to draw your five enzyme replication.